Hi, welcome. Today we're going to do something that is really overkill. So I want to do a spool holder for the Flashforge Dreamer. And since I got the tools available at the Creative Tools office, hmm, why not do it overkill? So right now I'm 3D scanning the side of the Flashforge Dreamer with a Creaform uh, view scan. So this is a highly precise 3D scanner for uh, doing quality controls, uh, inspections, in, and much, much more. It's not really suitable for this task because, I mean, I could de design this like really, really simple. And you will also see in the end of this movie that, that <laughs> the finished part is, well, it's kind of ugly, but it's a quick solution and I'm using overkill uh, ways of, of creating it. So let's go here and you can see the scanning. So um, I'm holding the unit, uh, it has two video cameras and one laser, so the laser is uh, on the bottom of the, um, uh, the handle. So you can see that there's like uh, sits on the, on the printer, it's actually markers for the scanner to position itself. I know it's pretty small but you can see up there on the screen um, that it's uh, tracking the different, um, different points. Uh, and as always, if you want, you can always check out the full video on the Creaform scanner. Um, I think it should be visible in the right corner. Um, so you can see that the, the computer tracks the, the scanner while I'm scanning. Sometimes it's difficult to track, but there we go again. Um, so what I'm doing is that I'm actually creating like a point cloud or the computer is creating a point cloud and then rendering a mesh out on top of that. So what I'm getting out of this is a SDL file which can then be processed, which I will show later. Um, so this part is basically like spray painting, but reverse, so you need to just make sure that you cover all the, all the parts that you need for the design. So in, in my case, well, there's a, a few, um, I, I could have taken like a, a caliper and just measured the distance between the dots, but well, again, I had the tools, why not just make it overkill so you guys can see it. So let's just skip ahead a little bit. So we're here re reviewing the file and I think everything looks really good. So there's a good solid mesh that I can work from. Uh, the cool thing here is about those lines that you see. That's actually no de deviation at all, it's just visual. So let's jump into the next software. So here we're entering Geomagic Studio from 3D System. So what I'm doing now is just cleaning up the mesh and uh, aligning everything so it's easier to work with. Um, so I'm taking a few points and just aligning that into the wall space. You can see that I'm now aligned it more, more or less. It's, it's much easier to work with at least. So next step is to fix the SDL file. There's a lot of noise, a lot of missing parts uh, and also some holes from the markers. Uh, the Crea from software can actually do that but I kind of like to do it by hand. Uh, it gives me a little bit more control. So first of all I'm just aligning. So I have one, one uh, uh, Sorry, one, one face facing towards X and then one that can help me create the Y for, for, um, uh, for aligning it in several dim dimensions or actually two dimensions. So there we go, now it's all aligned. You can see on the gizmo in the lower right corner that it's more or less uh, controllable. So, um, I'm just testing a tool there to create like an outline of the profile but I don't really think that worked really well. So we'll, we'll work with um, the meshing tools. So as I said I kind of gave up on that and I'm going to use a uh, tool called Mesh, mesh Mixer, uh, sorry Mesh Doctor to um, just remove like some of the holes and so on. So here you can see every part that it registers and um, it will clean that up so it's much better there. And of course we want to reduce some noise and we'll also fill the holes manually. And after that we're ready to go. So after that we uh, import the mesh file into Fusion 360. Uh, again it's all orientated so it should be easy to work with. Uh, the goal here is to more or less create a, a uh, holder that clips on to the side and also sticks within the grooves here. 
So I more or less just aligning everything, preparing the workspace. Um, for some reason everything's upside down, but hey, it's free, it doesn't really matter. So you can see here that I've done a uh, intersection between the two parts. And I'm kind of now just doing the creative uh, flow here of, of doing some sort of holder just to clamp on to, um, to the inside of this plastic. Yeah, uh, structurally this plastic will of course hold one kilo spools, but I mean if you load up two or three or four kilos, that will be probably a, a risk of, of breaking the side of the flash rod trigger. So the, the whole reason why I'm doing all of this is because I want to use Echo PLA much more easily. So there, there is a uh, Flashforge uh, spool holder inside of the machine, but that's adapted for their smaller spools with 600 grams of, of uh, filament. So I want to use third-party spools on the outside without too much of a hassle. Uh, the goal here is to share this model on Thingiverse as soon as possible. So if you want, you can check out Thingiverse slash user slash... Uh, I think it's AMID. Yeah, so thingiverse.com slash AMID. Anyways, uh, back to the software. So you can see I'm drawing and create the, using the grooves as some sort of stability. And since I have a really detailed scan, I can do that with, with confidence. So I'm just messing around a little bit here. There we go. Just increasing some sizes, removing parts, making everything really, really ugly. But hey, I'm still doing something. <laughs> but I think it's a it's it's a fun way of. Now, I, I, I please just don't hassle yourself while telling me if I'm doing wrong with tools. I know that I'm I'm really spontaneous when I'm modeling. I'm not. Uh, I haven't grown up from CAD modeling, I'm more of a, a visual modelized modeler, so I do like polygon modeling quick and dirty, just to make a visual representation. So construction wise, I know this isn't really the right one, but never mind, it's uh, quick and dirty. So just cutting up tools here, removing parts that we don't need, making of course the incredible necessary radius everywhere because that looks cool. So we're doing something like that and um, I think that's it. So here we go, of course everything's printed and ready. As you can see I've added just a small clip below as well, because why not? So I clip those on to the side, fits perfectly, align the spool and put a spool holder in between and hey, looks perfect. Again, thank you very much for watching. Um, let me know if this is a stupid idea. <laughs> Thanks, see ya.